So here we are looking at the church of St. Martin in the Fields, designed by James Gibbs and completed in 1726. And this is the view that he intended it to be seen from. One has to imagine these streets as medieval. No Trafalgar Square. And the spire rising above the red tiles and the portico thrust out into the far end of the street to make its presence absolutely clear. John Nash conceived the idea of Trafalgar Square as the major public space in this part of London. As part of his grand design for the parade all the way from Regent's Park down to Carlton House, in doing so he exposed Gibbs Church in a way that Gibbs never intended. And now the surface of the square rises directly up into the portico of the church. The greatest compliment that's paid to this project is when people come into the church now and say that really, apart from the east window, they can't see any changes. A lot of little things have changed. The pulpit was moved back into the congregation in order that a space was cleared here for performance. The intimacy of a small service is established with these pews at the East End that can be drawn in for bigger services or pulled apart to allow uh, a space for orchestras and choirs for performance. And a Victorian dais has been taken away that cluttered the East End and made it very difficult for the use of performance. The stone has been recreated in the form that Gibbs left it, that we know from his model and from drawings and also from a painting by Hogarth that was about a marriage ceremony at this point. With the decoration, we know a lot about what it was through the analysis of layers of paint. And we've returned the ceiling to a stucco white. There's a clear differential between that and certain decorative elements, door frames, the capitals. And this has been about re-establishing the floating character of the ceiling. It's been added to by the quality of hand-blown glass and light through the glass, very much as it would have been in Georgian times, clear, uh, just broken by the natural distortions of the glass. And we've taken away floors that had been put in, in in the Victorian period to allow the corners to be lighter. Gibbs used an ellipse rather than a barrel vault to the ceiling because he knew that would be better for music. The sanctuary at the east end was painted to evoke stone, so it has this slightly darker color. Um, and it is the only area in the church that was gilded, so there's this magnificent emphasis on the East End. The decoration is then further used to establish the difference between a celestial world and a terrestrial by the cleaning, but a very light cleaning of the pews, so that the patination over time is retained and there's this wonderful dark character to the base of the building. There have been a lot of changes, but they've all been about returning the church to the Baroque clarity that was conceived of by James Gibbs. Finally, there is the aspect of crafting. In all the surfaces of the church, there's this wonderful uh, covering to the framework. And we've added to that through the commissioning of the east window. Uh, this is a work by Shirazé Hushiari and Pip Horn. It's a magnificent rethinking of the tradition of the cames of the windows of glass, the marking on glass, to create a, a moment of concentration.